morning. Right, I wasn't going to do a live today because uh, I'm full of cold and I keep sneezing and I've run out of tissues in the car, which is a travesty. I think I've got some in my pocket. No, got rid of them. Got some in his pocket. But last night, no, this morning at five o'clock, because I'm an alpha male and alpha males get up early. Alpha males get up early and get shit done. That's what we do. We get stuff done. We get things completed. We, we, we finish things. We start things and we finish things. That's what alpha males do. But what weak males do, what weak, insignificant, low life, um, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, manipulating males do is they take advantage of people less fortunate than themselves. That's not what alpha males do. Do you understand me? Alpha males big people up. Alpha males uh, elevate people. Alpha males. Uh, uh, Hold people to the to the height of status that they are. So anyone who comes on board with me, which is why not many people get on can stay on board. They can get on board, but they can't stay on board. Because standards are here. And what these a lot of people try to do is bring you down to their level. And that's when I step away from them. Regardless of who you are, regardless, I've done it to family members. It's, it's, it's in terms, I'm not talking about financial because there's obviously people loads more money than me. And I'm not talking about um, success in terms of winning tournaments. That's, that's things that other people hold value to. I also hold value to them as well, but what I hold value to is honesty, integrity, openness, guidance, health, friendship, reality, many other words. But in those words that I've just said, anyone who's been a real tight brother with me knows that if you buy me a pack of M&M's, I'm grateful. If you give me a lift home, I'm grateful. And I would do the same. And I do do the same. And any of my friends, as long as it's something that I can do, like a friend of mine phoned me up and he said, oh, can you get me tickets to this game? I no longer have that power to get the tickets. Now, I may have some friends who might be able to do me a solid and get some tickets. But that isn't always guaranteed. So I can't say, yes, I can get those tickets. Now, when those tickets come along, yeah, I will invite friends and family. That's how it works. But I cannot just straightforward get tickets. So what I mean is, if it's in my power, I will do it. Because that's what friendship is, that's what that's what being um, tight with a brother is or a sister. Now, when I say honesty, what I mean is if I don't want to do it or I cannot do it, I am honest about the reason why. <coughs> so I'll give you an example. My sister wanted to borrow some money. Or lend some money, whatever the term is. Now, I know my sister. Whatever money goes from my hands to my sister's hands will never be seen again. This was a long time ago, by the way. This was a long time ago, by the way. So the answer is no. I'd never see it again. Never. At the time. Honesty. 
and I watched a video this morning about Fiona Ferro's case that um, you know and I always wondered when I first saw Fiona Ferro play I always wondered why there was this big gap of seeing her as a junior and then not seeing her until she's like 22, 23 however old she is and she played some brilliant tennis at the French Open a couple of years ago or what, a year ago whenever it was when I first saw her and I was like this girl look at her ability where's this girl come from so I wondered why she disappeared for a few years so now it's come to light that her coach wasn't being uh, honest and wasn't holding any kind of standard to her now a lot, and this is what's bad about tennis, a lot of coaches have relationships with their female players uh, in the WTA, in the older older things. Yeah. So, a great example, Angelique Kerber. Just, uh, she's having a baby. Who with? Woo! Her coach. Yeah. It, it's, 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 uh, Various other people have done the same. I can't think of any more at the moment. But I think Elise Corne dated her coach at one point. Radek Stapine had about five or six. Petra Kvitova, one being one of them. Uh, girlfriends who he coached, stroke, hit with. Uh, so, and it kind of makes sense because it's quite a close relationship between coach and player. Now, this is where the lines become murky. Pam Shriver's come out saying that, you know, she was, um, had unfortunate incidents with her coach. Fiona Ferrer's come out. There's a famous case in England, well, I say famous. There's a infamous case in England where a coach went to um, Florida with a player with the knowledge of the parents. Obviously the parents paid for the coach to go with her. And while uh, they were on, uh, supposedly, playing the Orange Bowl or whatever they were doing, they were having physical relationships. Now, <laughs> the wrong, is from the adult. So let's get that straight. The wrong <laughs> is from the, the the adult coach who took advantage of a young-minded tennis player. That's the wrong. That 100% is the wrong. Now, let me give you another scenario. And I spoke about this when we talked about safeguarding. I did the safeguarding training. And I spoke about this. Parents, and when I say parents, I mean a lot of parents, <laughs> especially in the UK, a lot of parents believe that the tennis coach is the Messiah. They believe that if they don't do what, don't pander to the tennis coach's whims, yeah, then they will lose his coach and she, their daughter, won't become a tennis player. And like I keep saying, these parents are very intelligent or very successful in their fields. But when it comes to their own daughters, their daughters are second in the decision making, not first. So I ask you this question, who is guilty? The parent or the child? Who's guilty? And I, 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 give, I give you this example. Why are parents so fearful of tennis coaches? Why are parents have such lack of understanding 
of what it needs to become a tennis player. That they are willing to hear what their daughter, in this case because of the sexual assault allegations, why are they able to hear what their daughter is saying, hear it verbally, is he letting me in or what? And ignore it. What? What? Why is that the case? What? Why? Why is that the case that they can hear their own child and ignore them? Oh shit! Um, why? Why? Why does that happen? What? What? Why are we in this situation where a child can be ignored? I don't want this coach anymore, mommy. No, you need to stay with him because he's got me wrapped up psychologically. It's almost like, I, I, it's almost like Scientology, where they, they, they wrap you up. The most intelligent, successful people, or some of them in this world, are wrapped up in religions that don't, that are cult, cult religions. Tennis coaches in the UK, they're like Scientologists. They are able to wrap up these low IQ moms. The dads kind of just go along with it, but maybe just pay for it. And that goes for boys and girls because the, 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 these tennis coaches are very good at uh, whittling out rich parents. They're very good at it. They can almost smell it. They can smell it in the air. They can smell rich parents. And they know that these rich parents are going to pay their mortgage for the next 10 years. And they won't, these parents won't leave. Like Scientology, they won't leave. Because they're scared of leaving. Because if they leave, they've actually got to think for themselves. So, yes, the tennis coaches are like Scientologists. But, yes, they're delivering sessions. Don't get me wrong. And in some cases, really, really good sessions. Now, for 99.9% .9 of tennis players in the UK, that's fine. But some of these parents turn around and say, my son wants to be pro. My daughter wants to be pro. So if your son or daughter wants to be pro, yeah, why are you being controlled? Why are you not doing what your child needs? Do you even know what your child needs? What does your child need? Strength and conditioning, right? So what's that then? Oh, okay. So the coach gets out a few cones and run around it for five minutes. There you go, strength conditioning. Let's get to hitting some balls. What does your child need? Oh, repetition. Oh, well, I can only do it in an hour. Well, actually, within an hour, all the science says that in an hour of hitting balls, you only actually learn for less than four minutes of that hour. And that's if you're working at maximal, um, uh, uh, maximal effort. Now, if you're not working at maximal effort, yeah, you're not even getting four minutes. So you plateau. You plateau. So the question is, at what point are you going to learn to become a tennis player? None. None. That's why, uh, you know, girls with the richest parents aren't necessarily the best tennis players. Because they plateaued years ago. Because the coach that coaches them, yes, we'll hit with them and yes, we'll give them attention. You know, a, a, a parent came to me the other day and she said, Oh, my coach is so great because he texts after a match to ask if she asked, asked how she got on in the match. I was like, You're getting gas because a tennis coach sent you a text to ask if your daughter's alright. And that's, that's enough to be gassed about. That's enough to jump for joy. That's enough for you to believe that this tennis coach is the one that you're going to stick with. Because he texts. Do you know that texts are free? Do you know that it takes less than 10, 20 seconds to send a text? Now you could say, well, some people don't do it. But then that shows how starved you are of, of, of uh, understanding and affection that... A 20 second text is enough to gas you up. Now, yes, it's the world we live in. We live in a world of insecurity. We live in a world of, of um, 
hiding. We live in a world of lies. We live in a world of lack of truth. And that's why I say I hold myself as a beacon of honesty, a beacon of truth, a beacon of, of telling people what they actually need to do. I've looked at your son. I've looked at your daughter. This is what they need to do. Oh no, that's too hard. We're just going to keep doing one-to-ones and squads because uh, what you just said, whew, that's, that, that's a big decision. Yes, because only people who make big decisions can get big rewards. Make small decisions, get small rewards. So if your goal is to, oh yeah, we got into, um, we won the team tennis finals at Roehampton. If that's your goal, great. But if your goal is to be a tennis pro and lift trophies, like Andy Murray, for example, you've got to make sacrifices. And with great sacrifices come great rewards. Andy Murray at 16 gets, what is it, over a million quid off Royal Bank of Scotland. Why? Because he's one of the best players in the world. Not because he might be, not because he wants to be, not because he's working towards it, because he is. Why? Because he made big decisions, or his mum made big decisions. I keep saying this, Judy Murray set the blueprint. So why are tennis coaches being able to Scientology trick all his parents? Where were the parents when, when Fiona, unfortunately, was getting um, uh, <laughs> unfortunate attention? Where were the parents when when the girl in Wales was getting unfortunate attention? Why is it that that these that these parents allow these tennis coaches to wrap them up? And yes, it's an extreme. It's it's an extreme that that one one girl um, has had the unfortunate incident happened to her but the the environment of tennis is that a lot of these parents don't put their daughters or sons first they put the thoughts and feelings of the coach first oh well if we don't do this he'll be upset fuck him forget him forget them what's important at no point have I, have I ever put um, have I ever put um, a coach before my daughter? Never. If you want to kick us out of the squad, kick us out of the squad. If you don't want us in your... Are you going to let me go? Are you going to let me go? Thank you. Are you going if, if to... Um, if you're going to drop us or not coach us anymore, fine. I'm fine with that. We'll find somewhere else. We'll find another way. We'll find another way. There's never, never a, a, a time or incident when I will put my flesh and blood behind someone else. And parents need to learn this because it, it's it, 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 it's mind blowing that a parent will put the thoughts and feelings of a coach before their child. Because if parents put their children first, a lot of these incidents wouldn't happen. Because you've cut it off at the source. You've 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 stopped it at source. But I'm gonna talk more about this because I haven't even touched on the actual incident of Fiona, which I find really, really sad and emotional. So, <coughs> listen guys, I need to get in and get some tissue and blow my nose. So, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will um, do a video later. Cheers guys, bye.